This is the Cloudlifter CL1 mic activator. I grabbed this for my Shure SM7B, as you can see in the shot here. Just opening it up, you can see there's a quick start guide. Uh, they're very thorough about what you need to do, what you need to have in order to set up. The biggest thing to note is that the Cloudlifter CL1 does need phantom power. So this means it needs to go into an audio interface of some sort before it gets plugged into your computer. So here's the actual size of the CL1. It's really not too much room. Comes along with this little Velcro strap and nice little rubber feet on the very bottom. And also you can see we get a nifty little magnet. So I plug the Shure SM7B directly into the cloud lifter. It doesn't need phantom power. What does need phantom power is the cloud lifter. So we actually need to plug it into a source that it's going to be able to provide at least 48 volts. So that way it can be able to do what it's supposed to do and really kick up the level. So let me show you what it sounds like without the cloud lifter CL1. Okay, so this is without the Cloudlifter CL1. You can see it's diminished considerably as far as how it sounds. If I were to go in and kick up the level, the noise floor is going to raise with it. This means that essentially it's going to get real gritty. It's going to sound less clean. There's going to be a little bit of hissing and background sounds that you wouldn't otherwise get if you were using, say, the CL1. And here we are back to the regular settings here with the Cloudlifter CL1. You can see that it's much brighter, but the noise floor isn't increased with that. So that's why the Cloudlifter CL1 is quite possibly one of the most ideal pairings for something like the Shure SM7B and some other microphones. Now bear in mind, if you've got a microphone that requires phantom power, this particular mic activator will not work out for you.